Oh, good day, everyone. Thanks for joining me today. So I'm going to talk about the, uh, I guess, the fall and rise of UFC middleweight champion uh, Israel Adesanya. Now, the reason I'm making this video is that although Israel is, or is he as he goes by, is exceptionally physically gifted, it's really his mind that sets him apart. And it makes that, it only takes a few moments to realise that, um, and there's certain things that he's outlined in the course of his career that makes it clear that this is a man who's mentally evolved and his physical gifts are sort of synergistic to this, but his physical success is as more, much or if not more so due to his, his mental capabilities rather than his physical. But what's interesting is there's an interview with him where he talks about his struggles in a normal job. Um, and he's quite blunt about it. He basically said, look, he knew a man, uh, knew a woman who was committed to, uh, as, as, you know, an as, as asylum of some kind. Uh, I'm not sure the word asylum is, is the correct terminology now, but a, a sort of managed facility for, for mental health care. And he was at that point where he basically said, look, his life was turning to crap. He hated his job and he had that number and he was going to call someone who could basically get him committed to that institution because he felt like he, his words, uh, paraphrasing, he didn't want to be in control anymore. So how does it go from being that point to being obviously, you know, perhaps the one of, you know, one of the, I consider one of the most successful, if not the most successful sportsmen uh, in the world, uh, given, you know, in a, in a world which is basically about mental toughness, how do you go from a situation where you, you're so um, just unable to get out of bed to, or whatever it is, just unable to really function in a normal job to being one of the most successful people in the world? Interesting question. I don't really know the answer. And you'd have to ask Israel, you'd have to ask Izzy, you know, the, the steps that took. But he has alluded to it a little bit. I think that, that one of the main things is, is that he just wasn't, that wasn't his path. I mean, I, know, I don't mean to get metaphysical on you, but you know, there's a moment, there's part of you that knows. And that, I think that's the, the secret of his strength. He knows his path because he's been off it. He's been in that situation where he didn't be in exactly the wrong situation, the wrong path. He's been doing something that he deep down knows he shouldn't be doing. This is not his life. This is not what he should be doing. Um, and he was training at the time. So I think perhaps that dichotomy between the training and everything else in his life was so obvious that he must have had, I, I'm, I'm surmising that he had to basically let go and I mean, he sought professional help at that point because he had a psychologist with his, uh, with the place he worked at, which I do as well, which is fortunate. So he clearly had that professional help to work through that to basically develop a plan and develop a way forward to you know generating the life that he wants essentially. But there's no easy out, and I think the the important thing to understand is that you know it wasn't like that was his problems were solved straight away. But he fought that professional guidance and basically made those steps to. To, to follow his you know, passion or surely his dream, not even his passion, but the thing that he was born to do. But if you look at him training, the, the struggle, the pain is still there. I mean, he, he goes through more physical pain, probably more psychological pain than maybe he did before on the surface, but it is in the pursuit of greatness. I think that's the difference. Um, he has the same, probably the same level, even a lot more pain than he did maybe his other job, but he has that balance with a feeling of fulfillment, of purpose, and of just of, of reward for doing that. I think but potentially in another job, there was probably just all low-grade pain, but no reward, and no sense of a future because of that. I think many of us can identify with that. As for all these USC fighters, all, all these mixed martial artists, their struggles are a microcosm and accentuated struggles of our own. I think it's also um, the fact that he... I think the very thing that makes him bring it to greatness in one sport, in the sport that he does, is also the thing that would have totally constrained him. He is a creative, freely expressing person, and that's what he loves to do. He loves to express himself freely. He's very close to people. They can tell physically that he's hugging all the time, and he tells that he's empathetic. He, he feels, uh, and he's a deeply human person, a deeply human and creative person. All traits, which are noble traits, but in, in, a, in a sort of standard office environment, could definitely see why that would would cause him a lot of pain um especially if he's destined for something different anyway all right well thanks for listening guys appreciate it um and good luck to israel for the next fight and i'll, I'll see you in the next one peace